Hi, this is Hadi. Today we're going to be looking at the US Airmen training self defense and of course it's through judo. But before I start this video, I just want to say one thing. For the people who re upload archived footage and old footage, please refrain from putting your watermark on it because for the simple reason is that you do not own the footage, meaning you have no right over it. So whatever you put on it is just not acceptable. Also, all you're doing is making the footage ugly by putting your watermark on it, especially if it's in the middle of the screen. And you'll know what I mean in a second. And the other thing is that when we reach out to you, you either leave me on red or you start lying and saying, I got it from this place or I don't remember or whatever. So please. Monopoly over information is highly unethical and also you do not own the footage. So please refrain from putting your ugly watermarks all over it. Thank you. So without further ado, let's get to the footage. I believe they are training with Kotani Sensei. So you will see a lot of strikes in it. And here you see the video. Um, Kotani Sensei was highly skilled in Kata. So it's gonna look like a lot of karate strikes and self-defense, but in field situations and in war situations, people tend to really do these types of maneuvers. And also in street fights, you see a lot of guys lunging and really outstretching their arm to strike. And to say that this is just basic training, no, again, the basics will take you a very long way. So alongside just regular judo training, the way we do today, as you see here, there is a lot of atemi that they do and a lot of self-defense. Here you are seeing them training in group, uh, very karate-like stance, and also the striking is very similar. So, and here you see the grappling that is very basic for self-defense which is also seen in Aikido. This is the first technique that you see, and it is a very efficient technique once you truly master it. So let's take a look at it in a more self-defense situation. So here you see it in the Goshin Jutsu no Kata being applied when someone grabs you from behind. Here you see it is the first technique that you learn in Aikido, and for a good reason. It has a lot of fundamentals in it, and it's a good pin to use. So let's see it in a more combative context. You see, you can directly take someone down if you really know how to utilize it. You can do it from the front or you can do it from the back, as you see here. So, and finally, you see them doing a lot of randori and nagekomi and uchikomi, as well as a lot of striking and atemi. So, now let's take a look at Nagaoka teaching his students. You see the striking in conjunction with the throwing. It is used as a, I would say, distraction method. And also it can be used to really hurt and put someone out for a few seconds or even less than one second, which is all you need. And it can be used as a kuzushi. And from there you can throw and you can control them and it's like I said, it's a part of judo. It's a part of jujitsu. And again, it, this is the same thing all over again. We often talk about the sport aspect. We often talk about, you know, how it's so many rules, but I really wish we can take a look at the police training. Uh, even today, they still hold their own competitions in Japan and uh, in France, etc. And their training is obviously not oriented towards you know, winning the nationals or winning the Olympics. Yes, they hold their own competitions, but they have their self-defense, they have their sparring, they have their drills, and they have their randori that they go out and compete in, whether it's kendo, judo, and whatever else. So I really believe that the way the police are training, it should be accessible to the public as well, uh, Japanese police or French police or American police, etc. Again, but also policemen should always uh, get a psychological and physical exam and always make sure they're in good shape, they're in good mental health, all that stuff. But when it, when it comes to training for everyone, it shouldn't be just the Olympic caliber that we all have to follow, although the vast majority of us will not go to the Olympics. So if you have anything else to add, please let me know down below. This was Shadi. Thank you for listening.